Hello everyone. In this video, I'll show you how to spawn to bulk or S2B with shoeboxes. Spawn to bulk is a method for fruiting your grain spawn. It's just simply mixing grain spawn with other substrates in a container like a shoebox. There are various sizes of shoeboxes. In this video, I'll be using a six quart Sterilite shoebox. I'll be mixing approximately a quart of fully colonized grain spawn with approximately two and a half quarts of bulk substrate. This bulk substrate is a mix of cocoa coir and vermiculite prepared beforehand. I've covered this in a previous video. The purpose of bulk substrate is to provide water retention for our mycelium as well as creating more surface area for the creation of mushrooms. For this method, you'll need a six quart shoebox, garbage bags to line the shoebox, scissors or a sharp blade to cut liners out of the trash bags with, approximately a quart of fully colonized grain spawn, approximately two and a half quarts of bulk substrate, 70% isopropyl alcohol and paper towels or alcohol wipes and gloves. I prefer doing this in a room with relatively still air. I turn any fans off and I turn the air off or cover the vents if there's any in the room as well as close any windows. Whatever surface you're working on should be clean and sanitized with alcohol before beginning. Your hands need to be washed and sanitized. Put the gloves on and sanitize them. The shoebox should be cleaned or clean and wiped down with paper towels and alcohol or alcohol wipes. The spawn jar or bag needs to be wiped and sanitized with alcohol. If you're using jars for substrate, they need to be wiped and sanitized as well. The scissors need to be sanitized. We're going to start by cutting a liner out of the trash bags. It needs to be big enough to cover the whole inside of the shoebox. You can just press the whole bag into the shoebox to get an idea of how big to cut the liner. Try not to touch the inside of the garbage bag. It should be pretty clean already, so there's no real need to clean it. Once you cut out a liner, put it inside up. Put your bulk substrate on the liner in the shoebox. Try to avoid getting bulk substrate and grain spawn under the liner. In some cases, you can have mushrooms form under the liner and it can get really messy. Save about half a quart of the substrate. This is going to be used at the end to pseudo case the substrate. More on that later. Break up your spawn as much as you can in the jar and dump it on top of the substrate. Break up any and all clumps of spawn. You want it to be as close to individual grains as possible. This creates more inoculation points and will speed up colonization as well as help ensure a more even pen set. You want to mix the bulk substrate and spawn extremely well. Make sure it doesn't go all to one side or in the corners. Try to spread it out as best as you can. Make sure you're mixing all of it. Get in the corners and along the sides. Once you evenly mixed it, pack it down with your hand. Don't try to pack it down as hard as you can, just gently pack it down into the shape of a cake. Try to make it as even as possible. You don't want mountains and valleys, holes or pits, and you don't want loose bulk substrate or grain spawn rolling around. Once it's as even and level as you can get it, grab the half quart of substrate we have left over, place it on top of your substrate, spread it out evenly and pack it down. This is called pseudo casing. This is done to prevent grain spawn from being exposed to the open air and it helps a bit to retain moisture in the substrate. This shouldn't be confused with the proper casing which is usually done after the mycelium colonizes the substrate. I don't case like that and I don't think it's necessary for cubensis. For some penis envy strains it's thought to help prevent blobbing which is when instead of normal mushrooms you get masses of mycelium that look like blobs. You want to spread it out evenly so there are no grains exposed. Once the grains are covered make sure it's level as possible and pack it down with your hand again. You want it tight and compacted but you don't want it packed as hard as you can. Once it's packed down and level, if you have extra liner, you can cut it off with the scissors. Try not to damage the shoe box as you can make scratches that other things could possibly live in. If you cut the liner off and disturb the cake, repack it down so it's tight. The liner can go all the way up the tub. I do mine short because I put holes in my shoe boxes sometimes for better fresh air exchange. Place the lid on the shoe box and label it however you want to label it. 
I usually put things like the strain, the date I spawned it. Sometimes I put the grain used and the bulk substrate to grain spawn ratio. It's up to you how much information you want to keep track of. I would recommend at least putting the strain and spawn date on it so you know what it is and how long it's been growing. In most cases, in about a week to two weeks, it will fully colonize the bulk substrate. This is usually when people will start fruiting conditions. Fruiting conditions are when you increase the fresh air exchange. For shoeboxes, people usually flip the lids over. You can also leave the lid normal and just pop it open so it's just sitting on the shoebox but not snapped down. You can also place another shoebox on top of the shoebox with no lid. This is called dub tubbing, reference to it being two tubs. More advanced people might modify the shoeboxes by putting holes in them and covering them with filters or micropore tape. Some people just increase the space between the lid and the shoebox, or they increase the space between the shoeboxes with dub tubs. There are a lot of different ways and setups you can eventually get into if you wanted to. A fair amount of people just flip the lid or do the dub tub method without any modifications. You can also run shoeboxes in grow tents, Martha tents, and fruiting chambers. Fruiting chambers are usually just larger totes that shoeboxes can be put into to help maintain relative humidity. I have another video I speak briefly about fruiting chambers and how to put one together, so check it out if you're interested. And that's it, if you followed along you have successfully spawned a bulk in a shoebox. Now you just have to wait. If everything was successful up to this point, the majority of the work is done and the fungus pretty much does the rest of the work. You just have to maintain the appropriate environment. You're now in the fruiting stage of the process of growing mushrooms. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section and I'll be more than happy to answer them.